Coming on here to give my thoughts on the Monday Night War version 2 TNA versus WWE later on this evening. And I just wondering what show are you more interested in? Are you more interested in the WWE programming tonight, Monday Night Raw, or TNA Impact? Now, I think most of us, um, depending on which one we're going to watch, I highly doubt there's going to be someone that's going to say they're only going to watch Impact or they're only going to watch Monday Night Raw. I think most people tonight will be switching back and forth between the USA Network and Spike TV to see Impact and Monday Night Raw as well. Now, out of the two shows, I would say uh, WWE has done a better job of uh, putting together a show fans are going to be interested in seeing, but there are a few things with TNA Impact that I'm looking forward to as well, mainly not the matches that have been announced, but there's been a couple of rumors and surprises that possibly might happen on TNA Impact, and I'm interested to see how they're going to put on a three-hour impact later on tonight and see how it's done. Now, first, let me get to WWE. Now, the things we know about uh, Monday Night Raw for tonight is obviously the guest host. That's the biggest thing, which is uh, Bret Hart is going to be guest hosting. This is going to be his first time in almost nearly 12 years of being in a WWE ring after the Montreal Screwjob. Sure, he was at the Hall of Fame, but this is the first time he's actually going to be in a WWE live event, and he's going to be in a WWE ring live on Monday Night Raw. So that's a little in interesting to see how that's going to be uh, how that's going to be done now. I would say I'm not interested in the Bret Hart thing as much as some people on here are because mainly due to the fact that, uh, sure, it's going to be in interesting and entertaining to see Bret Hart in WWE ring. We haven't seen it in so long, but uh, really, where is this going to go? Because obviously, we know Bret Hart is not going to be able to wrestle a match, um, and if he does wrestle a match, hopefully he doesn't do something where it's going to severely injure him or possibly even kill him because the one thing is after the uh, kick in the head he got from uh, Bill Goldberg back at, uh, I think it was Starcade 99 and WCW, that's the last time he's ever wrestled a uh, actual wrestling match. And after that, several years later, he got a couple strokes. And, you know, he's even stated that if he probably takes a bump, he could severely injure himself. So if he does do something... He possibly could do a brawl maybe with Vincent Man. That's the that's the best I could see him possibly doing is some type of brawl at WrestleMania with Vincent Man, and that's even doubtful if that could even happen. And if it does happen, don't expect Bret Hart to take any bumps at all. It'd be pretty much you know uh, back and forth. You know they'll begin uh, a lot of uh, punches and kicks uh, between each other, and probably using some chairs and weapons as well. That's probably the best you're gonna see out of Bret Hart in. Plus, the other thing is um, the whole Montreal screw job thing. It's so old that it's just getting tiresome to even hear about, oh, uh, you screwed Brad, Brad screwed Brad, and we're going to hear that so much tonight on Monday Night Raw that it's probably going to get a little aggravating to me as far as uh, hearing it over and over. And the whole Brad Hart thing, the way I see it happening, um, I see it being entertaining probably for the first uh, two or three weeks. Then after that, it's going to kind of die off. And, you're gonna, and a lot of people are going to say, oh, this is starting to get repetitive. This is starting to get boring. Um, now, Shawn Michaels could possibly help it out because Shawn Michaels is great on the mic. Vincent Mann um, at times can be a very good heel on the mic as well. But the whole thing, Bret Hart. Bret Hart is not very charismatic on the mic. And hopefully WWE doesn't give him like, 15 to 20 minutes on Monday Night Raw tonight because that will really bore a lot of the fans, not only in in attendance but at home as well. Um, but the one thing is the two matches they got on Monday Night Raw. Now, one of them I'm really looking forward to, and that is uh, Randy Orton versus Kofi Kingston. And these two had a very good match at the TLC pay-per-view, probably one of the best matches of that night. Um, I thought it was the best match of the night, and hopefully they have a very good match here. Um, be um, entertaining, interesting to see what they do here. Are they going to finally do something to maybe uh, turn uh, Teddy DiBiase face? Because it seems like they're teasing it a little bit, but it's one of those things that seem like, is it going to happen, or is WWE just completely, you know, forgot about it or don't want to build off from it and just kind of keep going with this Kobe Kingston thing, which I wouldn't be... Uh, Sad if they continue with this Kobe Kingston push because I think he definitely deserves it. And the fans really like him a lot. And hopefully tonight uh, he gets the win over Randy Orton and continue the feud because I, I think these two could have a very good match. You could possibly uh, have this uh, feud lead up to WrestleMania and have the payoff end at WrestleMania. That would be pretty good to see there. 
Um, and then the other matches, another uh, is a match we've seen before, and some people probably are looking forward to it, but I'm not really looking forward to that much, and that is uh, Shawn Michaels and Triple H, DX versus uh, Jericho for the Unified Tag Team Championships. Now, the only thing that's probably going to be um, entertaining about this is what are they going to do with Bret Hart's involvement in this match, and there's been rumors and probably not not even rumors, but it's guaranteed that we're going to have some, something with uh, Bret Hart and the Hart Dynasty on Monday Night Raw tonight. So that's basically what you got on Monday Night Raw. So it's some good stuff on there. Obviously, out of the two shows, it's the better of the two that actually makes it look like which one you want to watch because you got Bret Hart on there, you got Randy Orton and Kobe Kingston, and you got DX and Jericho, which I'm not really looking forward to DX and Jericho, but Orton and Kingston could be good, and a lot of people are obviously going to be um, interested to see what WWE is going to do with Bret Hart tonight and what Bret Hart is going to do on Monday Night Raw. Now, as far as my prediction for the rating for Monday Night Raw, um, I'm speculating the rating probably would be about a 3.4, maybe a 3.5, possibly a 3.6. It's going to be in the range of a 3.4 to a 3.6, and obviously with the uh, Fiesta Bowl tonight with the... Um, Boise State and TCU. Now, those two teams are not really national teams, but they're two undefeated teams that have taken on each other in a pretty big bowl game. So that could possibly take some ratings from Raw, and maybe the rating's going to be a little lower than what I'm expecting, especially since you got another wrestling program on at the same time. Even though most people are going to be switching back and forth, you got to think that even though TNA is not going to make a huge impact on the ratings for Monday Night Raw, it's going to be a little impact to the ratings. But I'll say more or less the impact from the ratings for Monday Night Raw will be mainly due to the Fiesta Bowl, because if they didn't have the Fiesta Bowl and you didn't have another wrestling program on, I would possibly say that WWE could possibly get a 3.8 or a 4, or hell, maybe, they will, maybe the rating will surprise me and actually get close to a 4, because a lot of people are uh, wondering what WWE is going to do with Bret Hart, and Bret Hart's been, it's been so long since we've seen Bret Hart in WWE ring that, you know, fans that haven't really watched wrestling in a long time could possibly watch Monday Night Raw just due to the fact that Bret Hart is going to be there and maybe get some of the old Attitude fans to tune in. Now, off to uh, TNA next, and TNA Impact tonight is going to be a three-hour edition of Impact uh, live from Orlando, Florida, and this is definitely going to be a, a big show for TNA. Now, the one thing is, if I was TNA, my goals for this show wouldn't be anything like, oh, let's try to compete with WWE, let's try to get more ratings than WWE, because if they do that, it's going to be a complete failure. Now, the one thing that I would do for TNA, this would be my number one goal if I was TNA, um, is obviously we know we can't beat WWE in the ratings, but the one thing we could do is make sure we put on a great show, put on a very good show, have a lot of surprises, and have a lot of things people are going to be talking about you know, after the show and, the, and pretty much the rest of the week and pretty much take the attention away from WWE, Monday Night Raw, and you know, Bret Hart's involvement of WWE and have more people talking about, whoa, this is pretty good. You know, saw Hogan in, in TNA. Uh, maybe have some you know great wrestling matches on there, and uh, the rumors and surprises that possibly have that might happen on TNA Impact is the thing that I'm interested in the most, especially one, and that's uh, RVD. I really hope this rumor is true. Now, RVD has uh, posted a blog on MySpace stating that the rumor of him uh, coming to TNA is completely false. Now, is this RVD just trying to work the fans and doesn't want to let the cat out of the bag and wants people to be even more surprised because people will see RVD saying, oh, I'm not coming to TNA, then they'll see him on there, and then they'll be completely shocked and surprised. Is that what RVD's doing? We'll have to wait and see. Now, there's rumors of Jeff Hardy as well because at uh, first, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that uh, Shannon Moore, he uh, posted something on his Twitter account and posted saying something about him and Jeff Hardy going down to Florida and meet with TNA and Hulk Hogan, and then Jeff Hardy replied back, and Definitely, it's going to be um, interesting to see if Jeff Hardy, uh, does. is he going to come to TNA? Is he going to re-debut to TNA? Um, or is he just going to be backstage and just visiting TNA? That's the way it seems right now. That's kind of just him visiting. But who knows? He might actually, you know, come to TNA, become part of the roster, and make a very uh, big surprise return, uh, return to TNA and return to wrestling in TNA tonight. Now, that would be one thing that I would say is, 
RVD, I think RVD is a lot of things that a lot of us internet fans want to see, RVD and TNA, or just RVD in general back in wrestling. Especially TNA, I would much rather see him go to TNA than WWE, because we've kind of seen what he can do in WWE. He's done almost all he could, but TNA, there's so many things he could do. A lot of dream matches. I would love to see him and um, AJ Styles against each other, and just him, him and Angle. They've had so many great matches in the past. I wouldn't mind seeing them together working together again, and just I think RVD could do a lot of good stuff for TNA. Now, Jeff Hardy, if that rumor is true, Jeff Hardy could possibly be uh, a huge impact in TNA as far as uh, ratings go, because Jeff Hardy is really liked by a lot of casual fans, and if a lot of casual fans learn that Jeff Hardy's in TNA, they might be like, hey, let me give TNA a chance, and this is completely different than the last time Jeff Hardy was in TNA. If he actually does... Uh, come back to TNA and is on TNA Impact tonight. Um, his name and his uh, marketability is a whole lot different than what it was back when he first joined TNA, I think, in in 04. His name right now, is, he's probably one of the biggest names in wrestling um, as, far as, uh, as far as how many fans like him and how many fans will go out of their way to see him. And Jeff Hardy could be that big, marketable star that could really help TNA. So that's the one thing. If that's true, TNA is probably going to do uh, very good. That that's going to be very good for them. That might possibly even be better than Hogan because as big as big as Hogan is, his marketability isn't as big as it once was. His name. His name value is always big. Um, everyone knows who Hulk Hogan is, even if you're not a wrestling fan. And everyone around the world knows who Hulk Hogan is. But his marketability as far as how much he can draw in the wrestling business is uh, completely different than what it would have been you know, five to ten years ago. But it's still, he's still a big name no matter what. And he still will draw for TNA, I feel. Now, as far as what TNA's got uh, promoted for this show, which is the thing that really hurts this show for TNA, is they... Really don't got anything other than if you're, you know, wanting to see this because of Hogan's TNA debut in the ring, or you know about some of these rumors with, uh, you know, Scott Hall, Sean Waltman, um, a couple other people, RVD, Jeff Hardy. Unless you know about those, really the only thing they got on there that's like, whoa, I need to see is Hulk Hogan, and I'm not really a Hulk Hogan fan, and you know, the rumors of RVD and Jeff Hardy really make me interested in that, and plus I kind of want to see how the three-hour show is going to be put about and what kind of matches they're going to get on there now. As far as the matches that are um, slated for TNA Impact tonight is uh, two women's matches. Those are two things that's been announced, two women's matches. One is going to be for the TNA Knockouts Championship. It's ODB versus Terra for the TNA Knockouts Championship. Now, this is a match they shouldn't have done because... Even though no one watched TNA's uh, New Year's Eve special, the one thing they could have done on that show to really put on a great women's match for the title, they could have had um, either Kong win that tournament to take on Tara on tonight's Impact, or the thing I would have much rather seen, I would have much rather seen um, Hamada go over and take on Tara, because that's one of those matches that's almost a dream match in women's wrestling now that I really want to see. Now, we've seen them two I think maybe against each other in a very short singles match, or if it wasn't a singles match, it was like a, a, a four-way or something like that. We've seen them two against each other and square off against each other before in TNA, but I really want to see these two in like a 10 to 15 minute match, and that would have been much rather much better to see in ODB and Terra, which is a match we've seen before, and it's not going to be a match that's really going to be like, whoa, this showcases why TNA's women's division is better than WWE's now. The other women's match could possibly be very, very good if given time. If given about 10 to 15 minutes, the uh, women's tag match could be very good. It's for the TNA Knockouts Tag Team Championships with uh, Taylor Wilde and Sarita versus Hamada and Kong. And this could be a very, very good match because you got three great women's workers in there. And Taylor Wilde, she isn't even bad at all. Now, and, and the other match you got on here is the Steel Asylum match. Now, this is... Now, if I was TNA, if I wanted to showcase like one of my, you know, specialty matches, one of my gimmick matches that be like that, I think casual fans would really be like, "Whoa, this is original. This is great. This is something cool right here." I wouldn't really throw off a Steel Asylum match because sometimes it it's 
kind of a complete clusterfuck and not even it's kind of it I don't mind spot fest but it's kind of like one of those spot fests that is a complete clusterfuck and it isn't good at all sometimes and not only that is TNA's Cameron and, and their camera work and these type of and this type of match is so horrendous that they miss so much stuff and there's and they don't really know what to do with with, with themselves that so that kind of hurts as well and I would have much rather seen a ultimate x if you want it to do a you know match with X Division stars and you want to say this is one of our original matches in TNA I would have really you know wanted to start to show off with the Ultimate X match that's the one thing TNA is going to have to do tonight since Monday Night Raw is only a two hour program and that's from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and TNA Impact's three hours 8 to 11 Eastern Standard Time and TNA's got that one extra hour before Monday Night Raw and the thing they need to do for that first hour is make sure they put on such a good product that people are going to want to stay tuned into your program and the one thing they really need to do is about the 8.55 or a minute or two before 9 o'clock have someone debut. Um, if, if these rumors are true about RVD or Jeff Hardy, have one of them debut at that time slot and have you know them in the ring, have them do something, have them get on the mic and people be like, whoa, Jeff Hardy's here, RVD's here. Because um, I don't think they'll do Hulk Hogan at that time. If you don't have RVD or Jeff Hardy, you do have to put Hogan at that time because you need to have something there um, Someone, someone that people are familiar with, RBD, Jeff Hardy, or Hogan, and have them do something that's going to keep the fans' attention and have them stay tuned into your program. Because that's the one thing I see happening with TNA Impact tonight. you got that first hour to play with. You need to make sure you put on a great product. And as far as that first hour, I expect the first hour, obviously, since they're not going against any wrestling program at that time, that the first hour probably will do a pretty high rating for TNA. It wouldn't surprise me if the first hour kind of got close to like a 1.7, 1.8 for the first hour. Now, the other two hours, it's going to be kind of questionable what, what those two hours are going to do because how many people are going to stay tuned into Impact? How many people are going to switch over after the first hour to Monday Night Raw? And as far as my prediction for the rating for TNA Impact, I expect TNA Impact probably to get it between a 1.3 to a 1.5. Um, and 1.5 might be stretching it. So, uh, to kind of be a little conservative with the rate, and I guess I'll go with a 1.3. I think they will do better than what they do normally on a Thursday night.